Hi guys and welcome back to Car Focus, this time inside my Mark II RS. I've been trying to do this video for a couple of weeks now but it's just been too wet. It's just been raining, the roads have been wet and I don't want to take this car out in the wet because it's a bit of a garage queen, a long term keeper so I want to try and keep it as dry as possible but anyway, I've got a bit of free time. The roads are pretty dry, 95% dry, so I thought why not come out in the Mark II and show you what this car is like to drive. Now, for probably a first on this video, we're driving along a dual carriageway. Um, I'm doing that just to get some oil temperature up in this car before we hit the back roads. But driving this car on a dual carriageway, um, it's very easy going. I mean, this has got the, the Mongoose exhaust. You can hear it, it's a tad bit droney, but nothing too major, and that's gonna be going anyway. But yeah, stick it in sixth gear, cruise along on the motorway, there's no problems whatsoever. The only thing that I, I would like, possibly, is cruise control, which obviously I had in the Mark III, which I don't have in this. So anyway, yeah, so it's all right to drive on the motorway. But going back to this actual car, this is a, a 2000, and, it's a late 2009, um, Mark II Ford Focus RS, 300 brake horsepower from the factory. This particular one has got a Super Chips map. Um, Super Chips have been mapping cars for many, many years. I remember when I was a kid, my mum had a Super Chips map on uh, one of her old cars back in the day. So I trust the map. The map feels good. So I'd estimate this car has probably gained around 50 horsepower as per most stage one packages with this car. We're also running the mountain tune intake now, as you've seen from the previous video. I didn't actually get to show you what that sounds like, so we'll cover that in this video as well. But yeah, fairly easy to fit. Uh, it wasn't that much money for the Mountune airbox, so I ordered the, I think it's the V2 or the V3 Mountune filter with the open end, so you get a nice uh, nice load of suction noises. Um, just adds to the drama of this car. So yeah, the actual driving experience of this car. So I've driven this before, obviously. I picked it up, I've taken it out a couple of times. But this is the first time I've managed to get the cameras uh, inside the car and to kind of share what it's like to drive with you guys. Now, it's 10 years old, so... <laughs> um, it's 10 years old, so it's obviously not gonna feel as tight as the Mark III. You know, it's gonna feel older, and it does. It, it, it feels like a 10-year-old car. It feels a little bit loose here and there. Um, it's got a few rattles, you know, obviously the interior is, is dated somewhat now compared to, well it's very dated compared to modern day hot hatches. But there's just something about this car. It's just got bags of character, that doesn't become a problem. The, the age factor just gives it more character. And visually from the outside it looks absolutely mega. I'm in love with the way this car looks. But anyway. The first thing I noticed when I got in this car and had the test drive was just how smooth this 2.5 litre five cylinder turbo engine is. It's so smooth, it just sounds really nice. It doesn't sound like rattly or farty or, I don't know if you can hear it. Little pop there. <laughs> it's just so smooth. And compared to a four cylinder, it's a dream. The way it sounds and the way it feels is a dream. So yeah, that was the first thing I noticed when I got in the car. It sounds so nice. And you can hear the turbo as well. You hear the turbo? <laughs> and also, what I love about this car, I'm gonna be comparing it to the Mark III a lot because obviously that's the, the RS I owned before this. Um, the Mark III, obviously, you had the engineered pops and bangs. And as kind of cool as they were, they would get a little bit annoying. Um, I know you could turn them off by putting it in normal mode, but I didn't like driving the car in normal mode. In normal mode, it just felt a bit heavy and a bit horrible. So, I mean, for example, sometimes I was cruising along, I'd just accelerate normally, come off the accelerator, and I'd get bang, 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 and it would just be completely out of proportion to your driving style at the time. Whereas this, you have to work for your pops and bangs, and they're, they're real. Listen to that. <laughs> yeah, so they're not they're not as like they're not as constant, they're not as annoying. Every now and then, sort of three and a half thousand, four thousand revs, you come off the accelerator, you just get a nice little pop. And if you take it to the red line, you, you get a nice little pop every now and then. And with a better, more de-restricted exhaust, that's only gonna multiply 
the sound and the volume of that. So yeah, it just sounds really nice, really genuine. And that's another thing I love about this car. Now I haven't really pushed the car um, to the limit. I'm still kind of getting used to it. Obviously it's front wheel drive, it's quite high powered. It's a, a similar brake horsepower to the Mark III um, when the Mark III was standard. Um, but it does have a lot of low down pulling power. <laughs> the throttle is nowhere near as sensitive as a Mark III either. Obviously there's no increased throttle mapping, there's no drive modes, this is just one mode. You get in this car and you drive it and that is the only mode you get. It's very simple. It's far less assisted um, compared to the Mark III. All you can do in this is turn off the traction control. But when you've got 350 brake horsepower at the front wheels and it's slightly damp, you do get a fair bit of wheel spin. And I'm running cheap tyres on this as well at the minute. Um, I really need to get some decent tyres on it. But yeah, this thing is quick. It is no slouch, and to be perfectly honest, it feels no slower. If not, it feels a bit faster than the Mark III. It's hard to tell that, it's hard to kind of gauge it, because the Mark III being a four-wheel drive, that was quite um, a linear kind of subtle power delivery. Whereas this thing, it just takes off. You can feel all the power scrabbling through the front wheels, the front lifts up, the back squats, and it goes, and you kind of do have to hang on. And the power's there from 3,000 revs, just pin the throttle and it goes. Oh, these roads are a little bit, I'd like these roads to be a little bit drier, really. I, you know, you can't have everything, though. And the handling of this car really isn't too shabby. It really isn't that bad. And although the Mark III would definitely be quicker on a back road, I don't think this would be too far behind. But with this, you have to modulate the throttle. You can't just pin it out of bends like you could with the Mark III. You've got to be quite careful. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that intake, but the intake sounds fantastic. So yeah. Future plans with this car, um, I need to get a plenum. Obviously that's, uh, everyone that owns these cars, they change the plenum if they're, if they're modified, if they're mapped or anything like that. Because they have been known to explode in the past and then leave some nice dents in the bonnet. So yeah, a plenum is on the cards. Obviously change the exhaust. I've been looking at the Scorpion, obviously I had the Scorpion on the Mark III and the Scorpion on, on this car looks really, looks really nice as well. It's non-res, so it should sound a lot better. Um, I wouldn't mind upgrading the brakes as well and the brake lines and fluid. Maybe for some mount tune items. I've been looking at the mount tune plenum. I mentioned the plenum. It's quite expensive, but I think it'd be nice just to have the engine bay dressed up in all mount tune goodies. Um, mount tune front mount intercooler as well. That's another upgrade I wouldn't mind. I'd quite like. I've been thinking about suspension. Um, I, th I was kind of toying with springs, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should just hold out and save up for the coilovers. Um, the KWs, possibly, and maybe some spacers, I'm not too sure. Sometimes changing the springs can make the car a little bit too crashy and it can upset the dynamics of the car. And it makes it much less practical as well. I know this isn't really a practical daily for me, but I don't want to be scraping the, uh, the front bumper and stuff like that when I'm out and about. So I'm not too sure about the springs. Um, that's, that's not really urgent at the moment. Um, also, just a bit of cosmetic stuff. So I want to get the arches done because they're very, very slightly, a um, bit of rust creeping through on the rear arches, rear arches, very common issue. While we're here, we'll just undo the windows. Have a little listen to this. Oh. This thing sounds like a dream. So yeah, this car, it doesn't cheat. It doesn't compliment you as a driver. You've got to work with this car to get the most out of it. You've got to treat it with a little bit of respect. It's old school in that sense. You do have to respect the older, higher powered cars. Don't underestimate them either. Oh. Oh, it's just so dramatic. It really is. And I've got a BMW M140i in front of me and he, he doesn't really want to play. But yeah, 
this is this is this is more than enough more, more than what, what I need um, this does everything I need that's what I'm trying to say and I am not disappointed I am definitely not disappointed in my purchase I can see myself well I, I hope fingers crossed I own this car for many years and this will feature on the channel a lot more in the future um, I, I plan on recording most of the stuff I do with the car for you guys so you can see the journey and then hopefully you know in like 10 years time I can open up the garage and just have this old piece of like art just sat in there that I can take out and drive and it's going to be like nothing else on the road it's already becoming like that you, you don't really see these on the road and there's there's not really a hot hatch like it anymore with the, with the big beefy arches the huge tailpipes cars now are becoming much more subdued and much more sensible and it is a real shame so that's why I said I think this is the last of its kind particularly when it comes to Ford and the RS brand I don't think there's going to be another RS like it so that's why I want to hang on to this and I just don't think the Mark 3 is as special I don't you know I'm probably going to upset some people saying that but I just don't think it is as special anyway guys that is the first drive of my Mark II Focus RS. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what sort of modifications and stuff you think I should be doing, or what you'd be doing if you own this car. Maybe some handling uh, modifications I can do to, Im to improve it even further. Obviously, I'm gonna get new tires, brakes, and maybe suspension, but if there's anything else, then do let me know. But thanks for watching, guys, as always, and until the next video, oh, I nearly get taken out by a lorry, I shall see you soon.